Hold on. First of all, it's not cheese. It's mozzarella. Oh, <laughs> mo- yeah. Sorry, Frank. It's moose. <laughs> New Haven style pizza. Come and take a seat. A pizza, a pizza. It's time to eat. Hello, welcome to Chard Episode 8, Chard and New Haven Pizza Show. I'm Kevin Begley, Frank Zabsky, and we are so happy to be here in Stratford today. We're at the Parlor Pizza Joint right on Ferry Boulevard, and we are joined by Mackenzie, who is the owner and operator of this spot. And first of all, it just smells delicious right in front of me right now, but thank you so much for having us here today. No problem. Anytime, guys. And uh, so you already brought out some pies for us. Yep. So it looks like we got a classic cheese and some other ones here, too. Let's go through them. Hold on. First of all... It's not cheese, it's mozzarella. Oh, mo- yeah, sorry, Frank. It's moots, <laughs> moots. You know, I'm trying to teach you all the new words. It's <laughs> yeah. hard sometimes. <laughs> yep. We try to use uh, mostly the best ingredients we can find. Yeah. Um, so you get your sauce, you get your grande cheese. We use imported Pecco Romano uh, before and after the bake. Um, then we have the parlor over here. Mm. It's one of our signature pies. It's got soprasad, mm. um, buffalo mozzarella, garlic, onions, and it's topped with hot cherry peppers and honey truffle. Ooh, that I sounds knew I really good. Cherry peppers yeah. over here. It's like yeah so you get a little nose. bit of that <laughs> oh, spicy yeah. sweet play. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> and then uh, over here on the left or the right, um, it is the barbecue ricotta. So you get barbecue, bacon, chicken, um, ricotta, onions. Everything has oregano on it before it goes in. And again, you get both cheeses or you get the Pecorino Romano before yeah. and after the bake. Nice. I got to pick up one of these. I'm just I can't look at this any longer. Let's see. Yeah. Look at the undercarriage there. So I've had a lot of buffalo chicken pizza before, but I never had regat on there. So I call it regat. Yeah. Mm. Ricotta regat. Ricotta regat. Um, but I definitely want to try one of those, but I don't want to try it now. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Thank you. Really good. Thank you. No, not to eat on the podcast, but mm-hmm. I couldn't. I couldn't resist. <laughs> it's so good. Easy, Kevin. Easy. Yep. Now, your menu. I was just looking at it earlier. There's so many cool pies. Do yep. you guys have a meeting where you like brainstorm ideas for the pizzas, or do you just come up with them on your own? Uh, a little bit of everything. We run weekly specials. So on top of those that you saw, we run mm-hmm. a different one every Friday. It comes out. Um, last week it was an oxtail pizza. Oh wow! With mm. buffalo mozz and red onions, and went really well. It was a limited time thing but yeah um it was it's always a group group effort here yeah was there ever something that you put on the menu temporarily and then it stayed because people wanted it so much one of the, we have vegan pizzas so uh, the spicy barbecue is roughly based off the barbecue ricotta oh no nice. um vegans wanted something so we gave them an extra one we yeah. had four and that was our fifth so that was the only one that we've actually added since we've opened awesome so permanently so the sign over here, established 2020. Yep. Give us a little bit of the history. How did you start this place? Sort of your history with pizza in Connecticut. And um, so everybody loves pizza. And that, <laughs> that, that's what you quickly You're realize. You're on the right show That's that. what yeah. you quickly realize in Connecticut. Uh, prior to this, I was a personal trainer in Greenwich. Uh, and I was doing, you know, 4 a.m. to 9 at night. Wow. Driving back twice a day sometimes and stuff. So uh, I had some partners in the very beginning. And they had a smaller spot. And they wanted more of a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, long story short, kind of got rid of them after four months and <laughs> went, from being, went from being a private partner to uh, here 12 hours a day, most days a week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love it. And like I said, people, everybody loves pizza. People in Greenwich, there's kind of a common denominator. Yeah. So that, poor, rich, doesn't matter. That is funny going from the personal trainer to, to, to pizza. It's yep. like you got you to gotta eat the pizza, then, then work out to get it off. Yeah. You went from pumping out, pe- pumping out pumping iron to pumping out pizzas. <laughs> yeah, nice. pretty much. So uh, <laughs> it was a big, a big whirlwind. I had never worked in a restaurant prior. Oh, wow. Um, so everything was learned here. Oh, yeah. It must have been overwhelming at first, though. It was, but yeah. the pandemic was kind of like a blessing in disguise because it was 50% oh, yeah. capacity and yeah. mostly takeout only. So it kind of had a slow start, which made it. Doable. Oh, that's interesting. It's like you eased into it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, kind of, kind of made it easier. For now, us. did you have the idea to open before the pandemic started? We did. We took yeah. the space over the August before we opened, so it took us ah, some, okay. almost an entire year for build out and with the pandemic juggling that. So, yep. um, finally, in the following August of 2020, we weren't able to hold out any longer. We needed to open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, so interesting, though. It's almost like it's better to do it that way than if you had established it a year before and exactly. it had to close yeah. and all that. Yep. So it was kind of nice. It was a learning curve, and I feel like we learned in part of the hardest times, you know, so it's yeah. moving forward should be easier. Yeah. Um, what did you grow up on? Because Frank and I always talk about the pizza that you grew up on. So the last episode, I was just talking about Chuck E. Cheese. Not that I grew up on Chuck E. Cheese, but it's a memory I have of <laughs> eating Chuck E. Cheese pizza. Um, but Frank obviously grew up on New Haven and, yep. you know, and Pepe's and all that. So what did you um, grow up on? 
So this establishment was actually a pizza restaurant for like 40 years prior. Oh, wow. Um, it had been closed for four or five years in between. So it was Jerry Shakespeare Pizza, and this was a staple. They served at the schools in town. Um, not the best, not the worst. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was here. Uh, other than that, like Sicilian, a lot of like Vazis type stuff. Yeah. Um, Stratford stuff. New Haven occasionally, but um, that didn't pique my interest until I was able to drive there myself and yeah. go and hang out and eat good pizza. And then we went pizza tours and we went on yeah. everywhere, you know, across the country eating pizza. Do you get people who used to go to the original place coming in now? And yep, Yeah, yep. that's great. Uh, a lot of the people come in looking for Jerry's Pizza. Um, actually, the parlor is a name that has like 144 pizza spots in the country. Um, there's two in Connecticut, three in Connecticut. So we get some people that call us by accident and order here. And I'm like, hey, you ordered my signature pies. Like, how'd you get so far <laughs> to get my menu? But, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. it happens. It's all right. It's fun. Um, it's kind of like free advertisement for everybody. Right, true. So those other parlor restaurants aren't affiliated. No affiliation. Right. Nope, just this. And then last year we launched a trailer. It's the parlor, a rolling joint. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 35-foot wood burning oven on the back, full kitchen, uh, parties, weddings, uh, pizza festivals. Pizza fest. Yeah, yeah good baby. transition. Yep. Yeah. We did a uh, something for Vicky Soto um, 5K last year, also at the amphitheater. So that was pretty cool. Awesome. Yep. We try to do as much as we can. So. So the name Rolling Joint, does that have anything to do with other substances that we can't talk about? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, they go hand in hand, pizza and everything else. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a play on words with the pizza joint and a rolling joint. So it's uh, it's fun. Uh, actually, we were doing a wedding last year and some lady stopped and asked asked if we were a mobile dispensary. <laughs> and she, wa she walked into the middle of this wedding and just said, like, hey, you, you selling stuff? And I was like, no, get, get out of here. Um, but yeah. But you could have like a THC based pizza or, you know, a. Uh, oh, that'll be the next you, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> depending on, you know, laws and regulations and something, maybe it's in the future, but probably not, you know. <laughs> yeah, might probably be only tough. for certain events. <laughs> right. <laughs> you have to get the THC beer first at the bar. And then yeah, yeah. Kind of and I heard that's all legality thing. Yep, so yep. who knows? Um, um, so, so do you do a lot of weddings? That's an interesting thing to have at the wedding. That's fun. Yeah, we have uh, two or three. We did two last year. We have three this year. We just booked another one yesterday. Um, they're fun. It's really fun. It's buffet style usually. Um, last year we did desserts. We're doing a Philly cheesesteak station at one this year. Oh, that's neat. So we try to do anything. Every party is kind of customizable. So we do yeah. as much as we can for each party. When my wife and I got married, we had a, like a late night slice station. Yep. So like when people were leaving the wedding, they had the slice. Somebody actually asked me to do that in 2025 already. And I'm like, hey, I don't want to commit to that yet. Can, <laughs> right. can you call me next year? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so everything, you know, late night, early mornings, whatever it is, the truck is available for that. So and that's fun because it's a nice change, change of pace. Yeah. I call this place a fishbowl. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the truck is beautiful. I don't know if you call it a truck or a trailer, but like it's this beautiful black, gloss black truck, super clean. You can see the oven. I mean, it's it's a nice setup. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys didn't, you didn't, didn't seem like you spared too much change. Nope. So I got that used uh, off a website. A guy in Florida was selling it a year after he bought it and built it. And uh, it's from a company I looked at building and I went to Texas to have one built and just didn't work out with them. So we found the used one and it's been breadstone? great yeah. huh was it breadstone it was breadstone yeah, yeah. um That's I, I got my oven from. yeah i just didn't <laughs> i just didn't like their i didn't small i didn't like their oven uh it's yeah. a very low dome and yeah, small FGM. small door and stuff it's kind of seemed more geared towards bread and stuff which mm. is fine and if you know how to use it it's awesome um just wasn't what we were looking for and so yeah. i found the porch trailer the same as i would get from them but i got it from um sdg trailers who actually makes the trailers for them and then they put their ovens in Sure. So um, you learn a lot when you're going to buy commercial stuff and big equipment and that kind of thing. When you were yeah. opening the parlor pizza joint, were you did you go through the same process looking for an oven for in here? So actually, my partners had uh, the same brand of oven, but a smaller one. Ah, okay. So we got with the company, and they had two larger ones. Mm -hmm. And we just picked uh, the round and not the oblong version of what they had in the oh, larger okay. one. So it's a Bel Forno from uh, Italy. Yeah. So oh, it's a wow. kit and then it was built right there in the in the corner. That's awesome. Yep. That's great. So the cool thing about these pizzas, because I've been here a couple of times with my family, is um, you know, we were talking before and you kind of described this as like neo 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 New Haven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm. a little bit. Because it's it's definitely got a sourdough taste to it. Yep, we use a starter and we we uh it's naturally fermented and naturally leavened a little bit so yeah it's definitely not exactly new haven but it's not big puffy new uh neapolitan style it's yeah. uh it's cooked through it holds itself up 
It really is like a mint. It's because it tastes light. All it's, it's very light. It's yeah. got a, you know, almost like fluffy in the middle. Yep, the air That's stays great. in it very nicely. Yeah. And, uh, people sometimes say it's kind of like a uh, a Danish, not a Danish, but like a pastry type dough. Mm. Really good. It's comparative sometimes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a while to get used to. Like, the first couple of bites, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. But as I ate more and more of it, I liked it more because it was different. Yeah. You know I mean? I love New Haven-style pizza, and we all do. But, you know, this is just something that's really cool, different. It's fresh. It's hot. It's crunchy. Um, you know, most people maybe not would not even taste that sourdough but because I've had a lot of them I can. But, you know, I think it's really cool. Yeah. And you guys have been super successful. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been a fun ride. Uh we haven't done much um, advertisement other than like Instagram, social media, that kind of thing. Um, the Pizza Fest, just getting our name out there and that kind of stuff, handing out T-shirts. Um, it's been it's been really fun. It's almost like a grassroots like ground game. Just that you yeah, get, and I feel like with yeah. pizza, it's so much word of mouth too. Yep, people yeah. either love you or hate you pretty yeah. much. So one hundred percent. Yeah, if, if people know to hate you, then they come with that expectation before they even come in the door. And they, <laughs> If they know everybody loves you, then they usually come in with more of a smile and a little bit more, you know, welcoming and yeah, endearing. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun. Um, it's mostly family. I have my mom and dad that come here. They're retired. Uh, they come in the evening and help out. Oh, nice. My girlfriend's here during the day in busy times. We have a, a baby who her second birthday is on the Pizza Fest day, August 11th this year. So Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so she'll be there for her birthday. Maybe we'll get everybody to sing to her. So yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely do that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so... Uh, it's fun. It's been a it's been a family experience. We have a lot of people, really great uh, crew. I was telling Frank earlier about how I have one guy that makes all my dough. He does everything, so everything's very consistent at this point. And yeah, it's taken some time and trials, but it's it's gotten there. Are you usually on the oven, or do you have other people who are on the oven? I cook. Yeah, yep. you do. Uh, if all? I'm not here, if I'm on the trailer, there's people that will cook. Yeah. But, uh, if I'm here, I cook. If you're yeah. in the building, you're cooking the pizzas. Yep. Nice. Pretty much. So I, I want to backtrack on one thing because I think it's kind of cool. So. Prior to you getting together with your two buddies to open this place, you never made a pizza or had very little experience. No, Ter Ugats. terrible experience. Ugats. 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 <laughs> for, for sure. Um, yeah, very little experience. I think I made like two. My grandmother's Italian from Italy, uh, so I've definitely made pizza with her and eaten her pizza my entire life. Very different from this, obviously. Um, the pictures on the wall are actually all family members. Oh, wow. So, That's neat. Yeah, um, Naples and... Yeah, she's from Italy. So <laughs> that's uh, awesome. So it's yeah. in your blood, <laughs> kind of. That's uh, my uncle who owned a pizzeria in Florida, or my mom's uncle actually. Wow. So my second uncle, I guess, uh, owned a pizzeria in Florida for many years prior to this. So kind of in the family. So when you said you had bad experience making pizza, was it just you couldn't figure out how to make it taste good, like how to do the dough? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the most you might no have had too many of those joints. <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> Uh, the most notable experience was like over a campfire while we were camping and using like a package of dough mix. Like, oh boy! Oh no. Yeah, it, it was a it was a bad time. So. That's sinful. Um, yeah, before that, not much pizza experience, no food experience, like no restaurant experience. Just uh, it's almost like that's a a little bit better because you don't have bad habits from the past, or exactly, you don't have things yeah. that you're, you're you know resting on from. from and I've prior. noticed that with like hiring new people, it's almost better to hire people with no restaurant experience than to hire people because they don't have the bad habits and you yeah. can train them exactly the way you want. You get a new mindset um, about yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of our people didn't have pizza experience. Mm. Uh, my chef right now is the only person that's come to me with pizza experience prior to this. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, ma it makes it unique like you can do it your own way as opposed to no i did it this way at this yep, place exactly I used to work at. so and everybody's trained exactly the way we want it done um straight they usually start at like cutting pizzas and then move to stretching pizzas and then slowly building and if they get that far they learn how to cook them but yeah that's awesome it's a little pizza factory here i love yeah, it yeah yeah churn and burn baby <laughs> churn and burn that's great yep. so we were, <laughs> we were talking about the connecticut pizza fest august 11th your daughter's birthday yep um that's gonna be a great time and you know w when you come to something like that do you, when you get people coming up, coming up to try your pizza, do people give you? Because I always wonder because I'm not at the pizza stations when we're at that. Do they give you instant feedback? Yeah, or sometimes they'll like double back around and say or, like, oh, yeah, this is great. or like yeah. last year we had a lot of people like call us or DM us on Instagram and Facebook and just be like, hey, uh, it was great. Like we really loved you. We have people yeah. that come in after that. So even the ones that are like a little crazy or a little bit less like you know the signature pies and we do cheese and that kind of thing, it creates customer base and it creates yeah. it creates. An experience so yeah. yeah they see the trailer and then they start thinking about parties or ways they can use it or yeah 
Because okay. I always think people who are critical online with a review that, or a comment on social media, they're never going to say it at the Pizza Fest and, and, and to your face, most yeah. likely. I mean, you probably get people here and there. but Yeah, every once in a while. Usually not the negative comments. Usually yeah. people don't bring those exactly to your face. <laughs> right. um, they like to wait like a f- week or two and <laughs> talk junk on the Internet. But yeah. yeah. Well, the one thing I've figured out in Connecticut um, is that, you know, you don't stay in business in Connecticut selling pizza by accident. So the fact that, you know, you started basically prior to COVID, you made it through COVID, and now you're, you know, prospering is a really good sign. Because, um, you know, bad pizza does not last in no. Connecticut, Mm-mm. period, end of story. And Stratford and Milford, you know, we're, we're all kind of close to New Haven. You know, if you had junk, you'd be done. Mm-hmm. That's, done. That's the other thing. We have a pretty limited menu, so it's pretty, pretty much just pizza. We do salads, chicken wings, and french fries. Um Everything's made here, so we brine the wings, we cut the french fries from potatoes. Um, wow. Yeah, we try our best to keep it as fresh and as made daily as possible. And that makes it a great family spot, too. Yeah, People little kids, kids love it, too, and yeah. since it's so light, they come and they'll eat, like, five or six pizzas, yeah. pieces, and they're like, oh, my God, they'll usually only, <laughs> they usually only eat two. So, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously it's a little bit different. It's not as filling. It's not super, super cheesy. Or, yeah. Uh, greasy or anything so you can't eat a little bit more usually people come in and finish a pie with no problem so I have two, I have two daughters five and two and we, when we make pizza at home they love doing the dough and yep. all that now do you make pizza at home ever or no because I feel like with people who have a pizza place you just make make it here right so when we bought the trailer we made some at home and stuff and I have made it with my daughter a few times um, yeah. since and my girlfriend is a baker she had um, bakery experience prior to this oh, okay, so yeah. she loves to do that kind of stuff too um, I don't make it as at home as much as like you would probably think. Because you're doing it all day. Yeah, here. and I like people will ask how to reheat it, and I have no idea because I don't bring my pizza home. I eat it here. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I don't really ever reheat it. I just make a fresh one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know how to reheat it. I don't know the best way. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I've, we eat it at home. I eat pizza almost every Monday somewhere else. So Monday's our day off here. We're closed. So generally, I'll go and try a different pizza place almost oh, that's every fun. Monday. Just yeah. try another spot. Just try a different yeah. spot. Just usually cheeses, usually, you know, something that catches my eye. If I see something that's um, getting a lot of good reviews or looks different or yeah. something along our line, then um, I try that. But yeah, just yeah, try to get out there. It's almost like keeping up with the competition or the people just that you're fans of. Yeah, yeah exactly. I like pizza and yeah. I like to see what everybody else is doing and see yeah. the differences and. Yeah, I do believe I always say when you try a new place, you got to start with the cheese because because if they can nail yeah. that or if they don't do it well, you know, you know, from there's there. nowhere to hide. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. There's nowhere to hide with a good cheese pie. So yeah. cheese pie. Uh, my favorite here is like a cheese pie with just the honey truffle from that pie on that pie. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's really nice. It's subtle, but it's uh, a little bit of sweetness on there. That's the other great thing that I love about pizza is people customize however they want. You know, yep. everyone has their own taste. Yeah, but you can make a pie out of anything you want here. Uh, we have vegan options, dairy free options. Uh, we have vegan meats. You can do vegan cheese with real meat. You could do real meat with vegan cheese. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's great. That's great to just like customize to whatever people want. Yeah. yeah. Plans for expansion. I'd Not lo- specific, but just. Uh, yeah, I'd <laughs> love to. Um, I'd love to do a takeout location somewhere sooner than later. Mm. Uh, kind of prep everything here and send it over there. And yeah, maybe local within- or you can't say. No plans in the in, <laughs> no no plans in the works, but I like to speak things into existence. That's kind of what happened with the trailer. Just talk about it until it happens. Yeah, um, I like that. Speak things into existence. Yeah, so if you talk about yeah. it enough, then somebody's going to call you out on it, Speak and you're going to have right. to make a move. So it's like manifesting. Yeah, yeah just so like, uh, I like that. Yeah, if I it's probably within 20, 25 minutes max of here, um, probably in the southern direction from yeah. here, uh, Westport, Fairfield. Yeah, Fairfield County, something area. like that, Darien. Yeah, we'll see. Um, like I said, nothing's nothing's ever forever. So yeah, anything could change any day. But I mean, we talk about it all the time. We talked about a couple episodes ago about how it's so rare to see like a brand new pizza place in Connecticut because there's so many of the legendary ones that have been around forever. You see them expanding the Sallys, the Peppies, and all that. Yeah. Um. So it's impressive that you've opened a brand new spot, and then it's and like Frank said, like you know, if you have bad pizza, it's not going to last. So well, it's that's a testament to you. Yeah. That's the scary part about expansion is not having your finger on exactly right. everything and having to trust the other people and sometimes quality goes down a little bit so yep. and it's not comparable to the original so i don't think we would do it until we were all ready and i had the right staff and somebody that wanted to run it yeah uh they would definitely need like a full-time manager right oh, yeah. possible possible owner like part owner or something yeah just in order to make it work somebody has to be there like i'm here yeah exactly 
kind of obscure question. What temperature do you bake your pizzas in, roughly? So I heard you talking <laughs> earlier <laughs> about oh how pizza <laughs> takes... You're setting this up. It's not good. <laughs> pizza takes the heat out of the oven. Um, so during the day when it's a little slower, anywhere between 580 and 600. And on Friday nights when we're cranking a lot of pizza, the ambient temperature, which is the air, would be like 660, 680. Okay. Um, but the stone is a lot cooler. So yeah. you have to find the heat somewhere. And if it's from the top or from the side, you get it. So... Um, definitely crank it up higher on the weekends when we're busy, oh, yeah. but yeah, generally right around 600. I mean, and these three pizzas are all really baked, you know, very evenly, you know, it's, obviously, you know, the oven pretty well. Yeah. So, uh, the nice char too. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I've been on that oven for pretty much three years, six days a week. Uh, it's gas fired. So it's pretty easy to handle and stuff. The one on the trailers wood fired. And that was a whole nother learning curve, um, is learning how to control the fire, learning how to, it's an art. It is definitely an art, and it takes time and effort, and you have to pay a lot of attention to the fire. Like you have to, you have to watch it. Yeah. yeah. And the size well, of the logs you're throwing on, and the everything changes. So, I always like to hear how many pizzas on a Friday or a Saturday. What do you crank out uh, on the weekends? So on average, like three forty-ish on Fridays. Uh, we've gone as high as like three eighty-five, four hundred. Wow. Uh, if the truck and trailers out in the same day, then yep. it could be five, six hundred. Um, I was explaining to Frank earlier about how the truck could handle five, six hundred pies in three hours. That's um, incredible. Yeah, and so if we add that to a normal Saturday here of two, two twenty-five, three hundred. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a busy day. And once I started, like let's say three or four years ago, I started making pizza at home. I started to really realize because I would prep like three <laughs> doughs on a Wednesday for Saturday. Yep. And it was a lot of work. And then I'm like, these pizza places are, you know, obviously you have people helping you, but you're making hundreds and hundreds of pizzas. It's a lot of work to yeah, get it going. You, you can't do it on your own. Like <laughs> yeah. I said, I have one guy that does all the dough. Yeah. Uh, in the winter, he'll do like 1,200 doughs a week uh, <laughs> wow. by hand. And in the summer, could easily reach 2,000 doughs, 2,500 doughs <laughs> in a amazing. week. That's amazing. Yeah, so uh, it's fermented. So we use dough from a day or two prior. Yeah. Um, so it has time to rise and everything. Yeah. And yeah. I had a pizza truck for four years prior to that. Well, during that, I w I've been an IT guy my whole life up until a couple years ago. But where I'm going with this story is until I had my pizza truck, I had a whole different respect for anyone in the food service business because I was doing one, maybe two parties a weekend. Yeah. yeah. But the amount of work that it takes because everything has to be wash, rinse, sanitized before and after and all the work in between. And it's crazy crazy it did add a whole nother element and a whole nother 40 hours a week when the truck's out there um between cleaning the truck after the events for the party the next day or stocking it or most of the time i'll go drop it off at like six in the morning and go back to start the fire a few hours before the party mm -hmm. and then we bring the dishes back here we bring whatever leftovers and everything back here and then we all come back here and work so yeah. I come back here and end up cooking dinner that night. I come like after the pizza fest. I came here afterwards and finished finished dinner Easy shift. Now. Wow, Just like Arsenio. <laughs> <laughs> finished dinner shift. So uh, yeah. it creates like sixteen hour days, but it's fun and like I said, it's nice to get out of here and connect with people on a more personal. Yeah, level. yeah. And when it's your own place, I feel like that that's that changes a little bit too. Like not not minding being here and yeah. It does change some things. It gets old after a little while, especially yeah. when you have a, a small child that you want to hang out with. Yeah, and, that's very true. And, uh, you know, spend some time with. But yeah. it's worth it. It's been a good investment. It's been fun. It's a nice change from what I was doing. And uh, apart from people actually coming in here, which everybody should, and, and come try the pizza and hang out here, um, but where can people find you online, like social media? Uh, the Parlor Joint um, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we have a website. It's theparlorjoint.co because our first one, .com, got – uh, hijacked. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like two months ago, everybody was like, hey, it brings me to a spam site. And I was like, fuck. Um, <laughs> but that's another part of the business that people don't realize. Like, it's, it's not just opening a restaurant it's anymore. It's never ending, yeah. yeah. Um, electronics, I'm terrible with speakers and <laughs> internet and stuff. So yeah. you learn how to deal with all that. You learn how to order stuff, yeah. um, purveyors and changing purveyors and changing delivery times and dates to work better for you. Is, yeah. Yeah, you learn how to deal with it. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for having us here. We can't wait to see you at the Pizza Fest this yeah. year. August 11th, by the way, if people haven't got their tickets yet, ctpizzaandbrewfest.com. You can get them there. So we're going bigger and better this year. We have a whole bunch of breweries. we got the pizza places there. And uh, we're going to have live music. Yeah. We're going to do pizza panels. We're doing a live version of this podcast at the Pizza Fest. Yeah, so. that'll be a lot Don't of wait till a day or two before because more than likely they're going to be sold out. Just giving you a warning. Yep. Yeah. Anything you want to say before we wrap up? No, thank you. Thank yeah. you a lot. And everyone come visit McKenzie at the Parlor Pizza Joint here in Stratford, Ferry Boulevard. Thank you everyone for watching and listening. You can subscribe, share, find us on social, Charred New Haven. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Remember, it's not burnt. <laughs> it's charred, baby. <laughs> New Haven style pizza.